Right, a new games console from Nintendo. It's called Switch. It will go on sale in March. Let's have a look, a little bit of analysis of what's going on here. David McLennan is a technology journalist. He's been following this launch. Um, what do you make of it? It's an interesting proposition. Nintendo says it's taken the DNA of all of its previous uh, games console efforts and it's put it all into one device here. Now, Nintendo's been under pressure since the launch of its last games console, the Wii U. It's been under pressure from the likes of Microsoft and Sony, but also from the mobile market as well. And mobile gaming is the fastest area of revenue growth in, in the games industry. So what Nintendo's done with the Switch is to bring together, some would say, the best of both markets, the best of the home console and the best of the mobile. And it's it's created a console which essentially does both. You, like you say, you, you dock it at home, but when you take it out of the dock, it reveals that basically it's a, it's a tablet that's turned into a, game, a games console. It seems, just looking at it, it seems a little bit old-fashioned. It reminds you of some of the things which made in the 1980s or 1990s, sort of, you know, bit, gives those bits you can take off and move around. It does look a little bit as though it's, it's a bit sort of clunky. That's what I think I'm trying to say. Well, you look at what Nintendo's strengths are, it's never been one that has focused on raw performance, raw processing power. It's relied upon innovation, upon some of the quirkier sides of gaming, and also Nintendo's focus very much on the family gaming element. So something which is too angular perhaps wouldn't appeal to its core market and compete probably a little bit too closely with what Microsoft and Sony are doing. So what Nintendo tries to do is to make its devices accessible. And also there's a lot of this sort of Japanese culture that goes into the creation of these games consoles. So it reflects its roots, but also it reflects the fairly broad market that it aims towards. Yeah, but you say accessible, but the one route they could go down, which is smartphone gaming, they've barely touched that. I mean, they brought in Mario, didn't they, in uh, October, I think it was, to, uh, an app. But they've done no more than that. Well, Nintendo has been uh, staying away from the mobile gaming up until last year. And, and perhaps the reason for that is because it didn't want to eat into its own portable gaming market with the DS Lite and, you know, before that, the Game Boy and so on. They've been massive revenue, um, uh, ma massive vehicles. They've sold hundreds of millions of units. So it's understandable, perhaps, why Nintendo didn't want to eat into that. But last year, it released three apps last year. There was Pokemon Go, which was arguably the gaming sensation of 2016. That was a partnership with a Google spin-off. The... Uh, Mario Run relaunched just before Christmas. That broke gaming records, uh, download records on the App Store, and it forced the Nintendo share price to go up through the roof. So Nintendo is, without a doubt, going to be releasing more mobile games throughout 2017, but also using that perhaps as an on-ramp onto games on the Nintendo Switch. Okay, David McClendon, very interesting. Thank you very much indeed for that. Uh, other business stories we're following today.